Boss here again. I'm going to teach you guys how to use a torque wrench. So a torque wrench just basically applies the amount of torque that's needed for a bolt so it doesn't, it's not on too tight, it's not on too loose. You're not going to strip threads and it's not going to fall apart. The, the torque is just a rotational force, that's all it is. This torque wrench is designed to apply a specific amount of torque on whatever fastener you're using it for, or you're using it on. So down here, there's a, a dial system. Let's see if I can focus that for you. And this dial system will have 90, 70, 30, has numbers. And then you have this lock collar right here that slides up and down. When it's up, I can't twist this at all. But when I pull down on it, I can rotate this freely. And then it clicks into position. So if we take the zero and we put this zero in line with this bar, we look at this line, this rim right here, and see what it's lined up with. And from looking here, it looks like it's lined up with 30. Now, this is telling us that we're at 30 foot-pounds. It'll tell you the measurement on top. Let me see if I can try and keep this focused. So if we want to go to 31 foot-pounds, we're going to pull this collar down, and we're going to rotate over to 1 it'll click in place. So now we're at 31 foot-pounds. And then if we want 60 foot-pounds, we're gonna go all the way up. Let's say we want to go to 40 foot-pounds. So we're gonna pull this collar down, turn it all the way, and like if I clicked it here, that tells me I'm at 34 foot-pounds. 35, 36, all the way to where it hits zero again. Now once the zero's lined up, you can look at this rim again, and you'll see that it's lined up with 40. Hopefully you can see that right there. So I have a uh, bolt I need to torque down on my bike that's set to 32 foot-pounds. So I'm going to pull this collar back and rotate this down to 2. 32 foot-pounds. All right, so let me show you how this works. So this is my frame slider right here. There's a, a bolt inside that needs to be tightened down. I just have a extension with socket at the end, put it at the end of the torque wrench. And like I showed you before, I have this set to 32 foot pounds. So we're just gonna put this in here. And this acts as a regular ratchet until once it starts to get hard to turn, you're going to start applying a little bit less pressure on the handlebar until you hear a click. This is a click type torque wrench. So make sure that you're not holding it here, here, or here. You'll throw off the torque and you want to hold it strictly on the handle and only use the other hand just to support it to keep it from moving around anywhere. So we're going to apply force down. And wait until it gets a little bit harder to turn. So like right about now it's getting a little bit harder. So I'll start going slow. And there's my click. And some people like to try it again until you hear a second click. And that tells you that you're at 32 foot-pounds. This torque wrench is my uh, Craftsman inch-pound torque wrench and uh, Newton meters. Has uh, two different measurements. Right here, you can see this one is in inch-pounds. Let me see, yeah, inch-pounds. And if you flip it around, it shows you measurements in Newton meters. And they're, they're equivalents, they're the same thing, basically. They're just uh, different uh, numbers. So what I'm about to fasten right now is my top yoke. And this one needs to be set at 180 inch-pounds. This one is a little bit different than the one you saw a second ago, where in order to lock it, there's this collar that twists. And you can see it says unlock right there. So if I unlock it, and right now we're set at 40, 40 inch-pounds because the zero is lined up with the center line and this bezel right here is lined up with 40. Now, instead of going from zero back to zero, this one goes zero to 14, then zero. So if I'm at 40 and I turn it this way to increase, so now I'm at 42 
and 43, 44, etc. I'll get up to 10 and now I'll be at 50. If I go 5 more back to 0, I'll be at 55. Now you'll see that this bezel lines up with a 55 inch pound mark. Probably gonna be hard to see, but there you go. So I need to get this up to 180 inch pounds. And that just means I'm gonna have to do a lot of twisting with this until I get it to where I want it to be. So I have the zero lined up with the center and this bezel is lined up with 175 on the left hand side. Let me see if I can get you guys to see that. So 175. Uh, right there and it's lined up with that crown so I need to get up to 180 so I'm gonna turn this one two three four and five and that tells me that I'm at 180 because 175 plus 5 180 and I'm gonna twist this to lock this in position and this lock just means that I can't turn this anymore it's gonna hold it in position so let's torque down this bolt so this is the exact same thing as the last one this is a click type torque wrench, so once it reach, reaches the torque specified, it will click. And once that you hear that click, that means it's reached its torque, you're done. So I'm going to be tightening up this top yoke that holds the top of my left fork in place. Torque specs, uh, the torque specs I get them from the service manual, or depending on what bike you have, you can call the dealership and ask for a torque spec and they'll give it to you. So we'll put it in here and start torquing down. Like I said, it's a regular ratchet until it starts getting tight. Now it's starting to get a little tight, so I'm going to go slow, putting only the weight on the handle and just using this hand to support it. Don't hold it up here or up here. So apply pressure, and there's my click. And that tells me that I'm at the torque specified for this bolt. And then I'll show you how to store your torque wrenches to keep them in calibration. And that's how to use a torque wrench. It's pretty simple. It's not a whole lot to it. There's different kinds of torque wrenches that instead of having this little slide right here or having the lock collar like that, it's at the bottom and you unlock it by twisting it and then you turn the handle to get whatever torque you want. Uh, a couple of notes that are important about torque wrenches is that they're very sensitive. If you drop this torque wrench, it's most likely going to throw it out of calibration. You need to get it recalibrated. You have to take it to a calibration shop or uh, if it's under warranty, take it back for the warranty. Um, these torque wrenches are most accurate in the center of their range. So this one is 20 to 100 foot-pounds. So it's going to be most accurate at 60 foot-pounds. And then it's going to be slightly off at 100 and slightly off at 20 in, in that area. The other one, same thing. Most torque wrenches are accurate right in the center. And if you drop it, you either have to replace it or get it recalibrated. You don't want to use this as a hammer or anything like that. You know, we take our wrenches and stuff every once in a while and to knock something loose and we're too lazy to grab a hammer. You got to be very careful with this. Uh, you can't store this at a really high torque. So this one's set to 100. If I were to store this at 100 foot-pounds and throw it in the toolbox, it would throw it out of calibration and it would no longer be reliable and I'd start stripping things or things wouldn't get tight enough. And the same thing goes if I were to set it to the lowest setting. There's some controversy on where you are going to set the torque wrench when you put it up for storage. What's been really good for me and has kept my wrenches in calibration is by doing 25% of the range. So for instance, this one's 20 to 100. Half of it is going to be 60. Half of 60 is going to be 30. So I set this one at 30 to 33 foot-pounds right around there and I keep my torque wrenches in spec and I do the same thing for the other torque wrench that I have in my toolbox. And as long as you do that, you'll be fine. Let's say you set this at 100 foot-pounds, you use it, you store it, and you come back to the next day and it was set at 100 foot-pounds and it's going to be thrown out of calibration. In order to recalibrate it yourself, you can just set it back down to 20 foot-pounds and let it sit there for a few hours and then set it back to 33, 30 foot-pounds right around there and then you should be okay from there as long as it hasn't been sitting for a really long time and if it has you definitely have to get it taken in to get recalibrated so this one was luckily just set at 32 foot pounds so I'm just gonna set it to uh, 33 
and that's it. Let's put it in the toolbox and it's ready to be used again. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, just let me know. I'm not perfect, no one is, so I may have some information wrong, but from my experience this has worked for me. So anything you guys want to ask me, just let me know and get a hold of me. I have all of my handles and everything in the description. So have a good day.